I think that Ugandans, as different tribes and different, different nations who are living together in harmony, through the years, you know, they, they really um, managed to accommodate their religious diversity. It's extremely valuable capacity that needs to be preserved and protected. The history, especially of Islam in this country, is well known that uh, most of uh, these schools, actually the good schools were situated by missionaries, whereby Muslims did not have right or they did not have opportunity to, uh, to join. The few who joined actually ended up converting to Christianity. So in that case, our forefathers, the Muslim forefathers, or our grandfathers, had to take a decision whether to take their children to go and study and being converted to Christianity or to stay with them and they preserve their Islamic identity and culture. My name is Dungu Sad Ibrahim. Nami Omba Jeweya. Kasoma Uzaifa. Aida Kulomba. Namatov Amina. Jafari Kasolo. It doesn't matter what people call you or the image they give you. We need to change the narratives as Muslims. We need to change the image and perceptions people have about us. And it starts with you. Islam is a faith and uh, it has its own uh, demands and it has its own uh, dictates. When uh, you associate yourself with uh, Islam and therefore become a Muslim, the expectations are that you believe in the five pillars of Islam, you believe in the oneness of God, you practice the five daily prayers and uh, you pay zakah, you fast the holy month of Ramadan, and uh, then you go for pilgrimage, if at all you have uh, uh, ability for that, especially the financial ability. So Islam is all about peace. You get to know your God in peace, you work with him in peace, you meet him in peace. There are several actors and several groups who are trying to dominate and manipulate the flexibility and the openness, you know, and the tolerance you know, of, of Islamic religion in Uganda and make it more militant and more dogmatic. And, and this is very, very dangerous thing. Once the issue of, um, of, of religion, you know, um, uh, it becomes um, um, basically a security issue rather than a societal issue, you know, um, this could lead into a very serious ramifications. Um, and I think the aggression, you know, by, um, uh, by the militant groups, um, you know, um, in, um, in other parts um, uh, of the Horn and what happened in Uganda in 2010, which was really horrible, this has um, created um, this tension and it, you cannot fight it. Um, through security means alone, you know, it, it's uh, the best way to address these challenges is um, to engage, you know, at the social level. This centre started out of our great need. As a Muslim, it was very disheartening for me to hear people speak negatively about my religion, speak negatively about the people I care for and the values I stand for. So that's when it clicked in me that these youth need an outlet. They need somewhere where they go to be together, to talk about issues, not to just hang around mosques and do nothing. Siha works across the Greater Horn of Africa with grassroots community, uh, communities and we are uh, basically seeking to enforce gender equality and women's human rights across the region. Me as a woman, I want to be treated good. 
I want to get more information, like this her project. They brought this project to teach us about Islam. Before we conducted this kind of training, we found out that actually people were having negative attitude towards Islam. You know, even the way the misconception as they are, they believe in them, you know. But after training, we have had a sincere reform that you could explain concepts and you see these people actually appreciating them, you know. We have had, for instance, training about the Islamic position on human rights, the Islam's attitude towards a woman, how are the rights of a woman being upheld in Islam, Islamic reform itself, the social reform, the political reform, the religious reform, the spiritual reform, among others. We really wanted to invest on, on young Muslim men and to, you know, for them to take the lead, you know, in spreading awareness among among the communities, you know, um, on the fact that it's okay to be a Muslim, you know, but that doesn't mean that I am, um, it does not mean that I am a terrorist, it does not mean that I am a dogmatic man, it's, it's my belief, my religion is part of my identity construct, you know, and it means all the good things for me. And basically what we are doing is we are trying to show them that there is no uh, contradiction with being a Muslim and being a, a pro-human rights. There is no contradiction of being a Muslim and being pro-women rights. There is no contradictions between being a Muslim and being pro-gender um, equality. I've gained a lot from Siha course. I had this desire in me that I want to be a speaker. I want to sit there and have some people listening to me. Eh? And I come out with positive, only positives. Yes? But Siha gave me the exposure, the platform to... Um, they gave me the platform of reaching out to people, to teach them. Even they gave me the knowledge, they've, the best thing they've done for me. I've got the chance to know how to express myself, how to fight for someone's rights, how to, to advocate for that positive thing I want to insert into the people's mind, um, and how to sensitize the community about something, even mobilizing the community. And I've benefited a lot in this training. I've gotten some issues concerning the Islamic law, human rights, how to treat women, and how Islam portrays women human rights in the community. The skills I've acquired have helped me to discover myself and to become bold on things that are squeezing me on the wall. Now I can talk and I can explain and one understands me. It has helped me to know that I, I have a right to work then that in Islam, they misquoted that women are not allowed to work. As me, I have liked the training because it, it, it has a way it changed my life. Before me, I used to live over, I used to live over, then I would not say that I was extremist here. Yeah? I was not such, but maybe in time I would have been. What we are trying to do is um, sort of want to empower the young women, you know, within the Muslim communities. You know, um, our program has 50% women um, or more and 50% men, it's a, it's a mixed program uh, where the women are allowed, the young women are allowed to speak openly about, you know, their, their challenges and, and all those things, you know, is to allow um, um, those young guys to see their women counterparts as equal, you know, as, um, and, and to value their capacity and to value their, their input, rather than, you know, accepting the dogmatic discourse, you know, that they are, they are uh, to be protected, that they are less of humans and that they are not equal and, and, and things like that. But of course, the major concern is human oh God, loss. I mean, kind of a, an effort up there. Yeah. Now remember. Oh my God. Oh my God. 
Islam these days has been associated with uh, issues of extremism, issues of fundamentalism, issues of terrorism, issues of uh, non-tolerance, issues of uh, being the enemies against uh, peace, among other issues. People hardly distinguish between acts of individuals and the system itself. Let me say, take an example of the Al Shababs, the Boko Harams of Nigeria and other, other people. When they come out in the image of Islam and they start bombing, they start killing others, they put them on media. It portrays a bad image to Islam and to Muslims. I strongly believe that as much as this is a responsibility of the Muslims themselves, and they need really to take a stance and, and to assume responsibility about this mess and chaos that's happening within their religion, you know, and its interpretation. I think it's equal as a responsibility of the international community. They have to acknowledge the fact that they turned a blind eye, you know, for decades um, on um, all forms of violation that's been done in the name of religion. And I think, uh, I, I think the silence was happening because all these violations were happening against you know, um, um, like Muslims, so, so it's like Muslims attacking Muslims. It's their own wars, you know, it's their own conflict. The minute it became like international actors, Western countries are also a target for those militant groups, then it became a global issue. Several times I've been uh, discriminated. Uh, there are some situations whereby, for instance, I am flying out of this country, but the moment somebody looks into my passport and he sees Abdul Hafiz, you know, he has a second thought. They told me, would you un unveil? I told them, no, I can't unveil because it's, uh, I don't feel comfortable when I'm uh, unveiled. So they said, no, we can't, we can't employ you, so I missed the opportunity. Actually, for me, the main thing that I have found out is that whenever I put on my, my cap and the person looks in my, my face here and he sees this signal, they normally, they normally say that. They normally, you can see a person tries to backbiting you in a way that at least even you, you know that this person is backbiting me. This is what we are trying um, to work um, um, against, you know, because you know, is to make them, um, is to remind them, you know, that they are entitled, you know, and, and, and the fact that, you know, they are Muslims or non-Muslim, it should not be part of the conversations. You know, they are Ugandans first, you know, um, and, and this is the position that they need to hold on to very firmly. So what we did is to give them the core, to say, guess what? When we talk about gender empowerment, or a woman working, this is what the Quran says. And as a woman, these are your rights, these are your obligations. And that's critical for a young person to know. We are exercising our, our role as, um, as the leading uh, uh, women rights coalition across the region and um, opening you know, um, this black box and, and inviting others you know, to look inside it and, and ultimately to come up with our social and cultural, our own social and cultural transformation series, you know, that should lead into change within our societies, hopefully for equality and peace. So we are passing them out to say, go into the world and make us proud. I want to use this knowledge just as the Wesiha has used it to put an, a positive impact to the community through us. So I'm willing to go out there in the community, teach my fellow youths about extremism, uh, moderate Islamic interpretation, and all the reforms that are needed in the society. We are going to go door to door training because if I wait for workshops, sometimes we may fail. 
because you you know things which comes in the resources if you don't have the resources but i myself am a resource i also need to first say over need a change in my family and me myself yeah then so, so that others they also be inspired by by me yeah? because i can't change it over someone's attitude about something without mine it's not good yeah I have a commitment of going to three schools three muslim schools and i will have to mobilize the students about a hundred of them in each school those are 300 and at least i try to make them understand what i've been studying and to teach them that the image the media portrays isn't the image that Islam really does. I, I, I have got to understand that how should I approach the community? It's not me myself to tell the problem of the community, but it is the community to tell me what to do. So I'm actually convinced to a great percentage that this training has helped a lot to change those uh, trainees from where they are and to where they are now. What motivates us mostly is that we want to contribute into um, this social awareness. And we think the youth, as much as they are, they could be perceived as volatile and vulnerable and susceptible to all sorts of influences. They are also um, the, the future, you know, and they are also the power of change, you know. And, and we think um, any investment in change, it should be actually uh, geared towards, towards young people.